Before we get started with our project, visit unsplash.com for images you will be needing in your website. In my case, I'll be downloading about cars. Note, you can do anything that you want aside from cars. Try to download at least 10 images in order for you to use them later on. But for now, you can download at least 4 for you to use something. Next, download at least one icon for now. Just go to flaticon.com and select related icon to your chosen topic or use the icon provided by Bootstrap. Before we get started, download the HTML file and CSS on the description link. We will be using the recent version of Bootstrap. This contains an app CSS file connected to your HTML automatically. Also, Bootstrap is connected likewise with the Google font which we will be using, likewise with the script. But if you feel comfortable using the latest version of Bootstrap, you can always follow this video. Let's start by inserting a title for our project. In this case for educational purposes, I'll be using Habibi Cars. Proceed now at your app.css file, then let's change the background color of the index. After that, open in another browser for us to see the effect. It's good to start from a random color. Later in the project, you can always change them according to your liking. What is important is to eliminate the default color which is the white background. On this part, we will create a custom navbar. Let's use a NAV with a class navbar. We are still calling the navbar class inside your bootstrap. Then let's set the navbar dash dark which turns it into dark or black. Bootstrap class used to control the visibility of the navigation bar, navbar, based on the viewport width. In bootstrap, the MD stands for medium sized devices. The navbar expand MD class specifies that the navbar should be expanded and visible on devices with a viewport width equal to or greater than the medium breakpoint size. Then let's insert the brand name of the website. In my case, I used Habibi. The navbar dash brand specifies the class brand inside your bootstrap. Open in your browser again to test the changes of our project. This should allow to appear the brand name of the website inside your navbar. Next, we create a hamburger menu. A hamburger menu is a way to display navigation links on a website, usually for mobile devices and smaller screens. However, CSS hamburger menus can be used for desktop websites as well. Once you click the hamburger icon, a sliding menu will appear, displaying on top of the main content. Then we will call the toggler icon so that it will appear in a medium size screen. I made a correction on the part of the spelling of data toggle. Once we got it right, the hamburger button appears if we break into a medium sized screen down to the smallest screen available. Then what we are going to do next is the menu appearing once we click the burger menu button. Just below the button, we create another div, then use the class collapse navbar dash collapse and an ID for to be inserted at the data target. This will make it collapse to what is inside this data target. Remember, you can use any ID name that you want to insert on this but try to be professional when it comes to naming your IDs. So in order not to be wrong with this, you can just copy and paste the ID value inside your data target. Then let's insert an unordered list with a class navbar dash NAV, and inside it is an list or the LI. Inside ULI we create a class calling the NAV dash item. In this part we create what will appear inside your menu. Then we create a link using the anchor tag. We will insert the class in AV link. Then we insert the name of the pages that will appear to our front end. Once we are done, we can just copy and paste this part to duplicate. So this is similar to the home link. Let me just speed it up a little bit and change the names according to my needs. And when you're done, refresh the index page to see the links we have created. Somehow, this is how it looks like. Try to test your outputs by changing the size of the screen and see how it looks like. Test the hamburger menu button if it works. 
Notice how the menu behaves after what we have coded. This should be responsive enough when the size of the screen changes. Next, we are going to set the font that we have link in this index page. Let me change a bit on this title page and also the brand. It's up to you if you want to remove the dark nav bar. In this case, I'm going to erase the dark nav bar. Then we will apply changes in the app.css. But I have to go back to the index to create an ID for my nav bar in order for us to change how it looks in the CSS. I name it main nav bar, then try to copy this so that you cannot go wrong in naming inside your CSS. Now you have to remember this selector when using the number sign, meaning you've used an ID selector. This time, let's change the color of the navbar brand name. I almost forgot which descendant we are referring this changes. Look for the class of the navbar brand. At this part, I am declaring the descendant of the main navbar using the dot followed by the class name of the descendant. Again, it is important to practice which of the descendants we are going to take effect inside your CSS. And if we refresh this page, you'll notice the class of the navbar brand changes, not the whole list. Next, we need to change the font size of the list in such a way that it should be almost the same size as the navbar brand. So when we refresh this, look at the difference on the appearance. Now, let's head back at the index, and we will apply the font style that is already linked in this index. Be sure to check it out if it is properly linked. This should be applied inside the body in order that the font will take effect inside the whole file. At this part, declare the font family Nunido and the sans serif type of that Nunido font. Then notice how it takes effect on our text once we refresh the browser. Again, we declare it inside the body in order to take effect on the whole page. Next, we will change how the navbar links changes its color. Again, get the class name as our descendant inside our main navbar. The descendant NAV links is the same as the one that we used inside our index. So we are going to change the color of the link at the same time when it hovers. This way I want the color to be the same as the brand color upon hovering the cursor around the links. But then, try not to use this kind of hover effect in applying the hover color, not on the background of the links. There's a big difference between the color to a background color effect. Just a reminder. This looks unprofessional, so avoid this kind of designs as much as possible. However, it doesn't mean it can't be done this way. In a case-to-case -case basis, you can always apply either of the two. Next, we will remove the padding around the brand name. Using the PY-0, referring, we remove the padding top and bottom of the navbar. Referring to the Y-axis top and bottom equal to 0. Notice the change once we refresh. So we remove the spaces, particularly the padding on the top and bottom. I'll make this navbar brand to be strong on this part. Also, we will set the navbar to be fixed so that the navbar will stay even we scroll it up and down. For us to understand what I'm trying to say, let's create a container with rows and columns and insert lorem inside for us to experience how it looks like when we fix the navbar. I'll copy this lorem multiple times in order for us to see the problem when we don't fix the navbar. 
So when I scroll, the navbar disappears from our screen. We want this to be appearing whenever we scroll up and down. So what we need to do is call on the class fixed dash top and declare it inside our main navbar. When we refresh, it looks overlapping, but we will be fixing this part soon. What is important is, we already set the navbar to be fixed on top once we scroll up and down, we are done with the navbar. We will get back on this part once we are done on the second part. I hope you learned something with this video. I'll erase the container now, then proceed on the second part of this project.